I often like people to taste the beverage first, just to kind of um, introduce well, that to their mouth. But okay, that's well, what I'm used to in, in wine tasting. First, what we're going to do with the, the beer is get it around the glass a little bit. I want you to swirl. I want you to get your nose in there. This is what I call a cheese war. We have wine versus beer with cheese in front of an audience. And it's almost like Iron Chef, but it's Iron Sommelier. My strategy is to show why I think wine is as versatile, if not more versatile, than beer with cheese. People think of wine as the perfect accompaniment for cheese. I think that beer actually does a better job. I think my strategy is to really kind of jump out of the box with something unusual, a wine that's unusual, a wine that's kind of not expected. It's a frizzante wine. It's a low alcohol frizzante wine. This is one of the wines I call my breakfast wines. I love these wines for brunches. I think they're great. Beer, I think, can absolutely refresh the palate. This style of beer is a style of farmhouse ale, and I think this is one area where beer has it over most wines is carbonation. Uh, carbonation lifts strong flavors from your palate. It cuts through fat, scrubbing bubbles literally scrub it off your tongue. My other feeling is that while wine is pretty good at doing contrast with cheeses, beer is better at doing harmony. The beer becomes the beer version of the cheese, and the cheese becomes the cheese version of the beer. Still with me? I love the texture of the beer with the cheese, but they do become one to me. And this is, again, why I love wine, particularly this wine with cheese, because one just kind of balances out the other. You know, and so I just, I think it's a handshake versus a big old hug. I, I think that the handshake versus the embrace was a good way of putting it. It's a good handshake, but it is more contrast versus the harmony. So it really kind of depends on, are you in a contrast mood? A little bit standoffish? Maybe just a handshake? Or are you in the mood for the hug? So I think it's interesting. Again, it's about the experience you want to have, not necessarily are, is one better than the other? I'm kind of into the hug. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've got a steak, you think about it, say you decide to have a glass of Cabernet with a steak, that's essentially like a fruit sauce against what is a caramelized piece of what is hopefully really good meat. When you have a brown ale with that, you're bringing caramelized flavors, some chocolatey flavors that specifically link up with the flavors on the surface of that steak. They taste a little bit the same, and it's that harmony that really brings you some of the best matches that you can get. As brewers, we have taste profiles. One can have a grassy taste, a lemony taste. A, this is in the beer. And one can eventually work out which beer characteristics would most suit the sort of food that one is talking about. If you love coffee, if you love espresso or chocolate, if you love citrus, if you love Chardonnay, if you love um, uh, champagne. There's a beer that, that has, ha, has those characteristics uh, and more. Several types of dark beer that are sweet rather than, rather than rusty uh, will go wonderfully well with anything that contains chocolate, especially uh, very bitter chocolate, very black, dark chocolate. I'm a bit of a chocoholic, so I just love that. I can't wait for the see the look on your guys' faces when you, when you smell this beer. The beer uh, is actually smoked. So here, we have a beer that smells faintly of, dry, you know, of smoked sausages. So it has something else going on. Those of you who may be familiar with the uh, German-style Weiss beer or Weizen beer, made half from wheat and half from barley. Also fermented with a special yeast strain, which gives you aromas of bananas, cloves, bubble gum, and sometimes a little bit of smoke. Now, when you first smell it, you say, OK, that's pretty weird. <laughs> but, but in fact, when you get it together with food, let me tell you, if you got bacon and eggs, oh boy. You got pork, brilliant. So you can really bring this to bear with barbecue and all sorts of things. And I think that this is just the thing to go with a smoked cheese. You get around the glass, you're not going to miss the smoke. Wow. Some people will say, well, I don't drink beer. I just drink wine. That's kind of like saying, I'm going to write a symphony, and I'm going to use half the instruments and half the notes. There are a lot more instruments and a lot more notes than most people realize. Beer and wine are products of equal nobility, equal complexity, 
equal history. There is no need for, for beer to take second place. And you're not being pretentious if you say, this is a great beer, I really love it. What do you guys think, wine or beer? The wines were great, but I think a lot of the beer is really accenting the cheese well, and most people would never think to do it because it's just never talked about. I was very skeptical with the idea of pairing cheese with beer. Um, but two of the beers tonight were like off the charts. I've never had anything like them. They were amazing with the cheese. I was very impressed. Well, let's see, who likes the, uh, the wine better? And let's see hands for beer. Converts. <laughs> it's wine people who really show up for this a lot of the time. So you see people have their minds changed totally right before their own eyes, and they can't believe that it's even happened. You see wine people show up and they say, I can't believe I voted for the beer. It's tough to get people to drink beer when they're just thinking, if I'm dining or fine dining, it's wine. And if I'm at a picnic or I'm at the ballpark, I'm going to have beer. And I think a lot of people, there's a lot of room in, in the middle to kind of meet and have a dialogue with people to let them understand that there are beers that are absolutely exquisite and I would serve them at the finest restaurant.